I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my daily life living in Nicaragua. Today we are back in Managua in Zona 1 in Zona Una, and I'm out for a walk. I'm going to show you guys more of the Via Fontana. So it's just another day going out for a walk. We're going to be heading down the hill. I'm actually starting from this is the double tree that I'm at right now. You'll see. I'll prove it here in a second. And uh, we're going to be heading down the hill. The other video we did was up the hill, up that way. We're going to head down this way towards the traditional Via Fontana so you guys can see more of what it's like down there. So I'm going to flip the camera around and just take you guys out on a walk this morning. So let's get to that walk right after the bump. Good morning, everyone. It is not even eight o'clock in the morning yet. So this is uh, unusual for me to be out filming this early. Now you can't really tell in the videos and I hate, this is one of the things I hate about videos is how difficult it is to show elevation change. But that is a major hill and that is where I walked yesterday is way up that hill to Villa Fontana Sur and to La Aurora. And now we're heading down the hill from the double tree, obviously and beautiful open space out to the right here. That's looking over towards Santo Domingo. Very nice morning out here. This is the Colegio Central America. See, that is a very nice looking high school back there. I don't know it because I don't really know high schools here, but Okay, real quickly, this is just a beautiful house over here. And at night, all these, uh, what looks like white lights going along their wall actually all light up in different colors. Very cool. So this is a Saturday morning that I'm recording this. So if you're wondering where traffic is like, we're really close to eight o'clock. And on a Saturday morning, I feel like, I feel like they have like a stage in there or something at the high school. It'd be neat to get a tour of some of these schools because a lot of people are interested in what schools are like here and uh, touring some would be would be pretty useful. You can see the views sort of through there, how all the houses here cling to cliffs. Wow, look at the size of that house. That is wow. All right, we need to cross the road though because our sidewalk is over there. We've got nothing over here, uh, but really traffic out here isn't that bad. And on this part, it's really wide. Now this is the road that I'm looking down is the Avenida Primera de los Robles. And Los Robles, the neighborhood is directly in front of us, as is the lake. This is more of the campus over here. You can see it's a big open space. Very large campus. There's trails going through there, through the woods. Like I can only imagine this is a pretty cool spot to have a high school. I mean, seriously, look at those grounds. Never had anything like that when I was in school. All right, so we have a small house, or presumably small, with amazing views that is for sale over there, right next to, so that's the double tree, then that amazing estate, and then this smaller house with this red, white, and blue fencing. And then we have a real estate office, Rienes, uh, Bienes Reces is real estate or a real estate office, in that little house. And then a couple little nondescript things along here. It's a very nice morning for a walk. I'm glad I'm out here. I am doing this walk for you guys and then doing a quick shower. That's Pupuseria right there. And, uh, and then we're heading to Cafe Molina at the Plaza La Fe to get breakfast for my kids. It's one of their favorite restaurants and we almost never make it because they really just want breakfast there and they stop serving at like 11. So you, we have a tendency to not make it. And then we are heading to Ciudad Sandino and off to Leon. All right, so just noting again, red, white, and blue here. I don't know what the, what the reason is, but this is a obviously a lot of trash because it's an abandoned lot. So first of all, there's a road over here that goes down the hill, but then you have a lot for sale with nothing on it. Now, I mentioned this yesterday, a lot of these lots are very narrow because they come up against a cliff. So beautiful spot, lots of opportunity for absolutely sure. This could be an amazing couple of houses, but be aware that it is a building challenge because of elevation change on the lot. 
over here on the left, we are still going by this amazing campus of the high school, the Colegio. It just goes on and on. They got a building down there now. There's some kind of field down there. One of these. All right, now we're getting past the empty stuff and we're getting into the real shopping and such of Upper Via Fontana. This is the Madeiras La Casa. This is a fashion house. You can tell these are nice buildings. This is this little bit would fit into San Jose, Costa Rica. You'd never notice it wasn't wasn't normal. And then right here, I want you to pay attention. This is Boca Chica. This is a really new, very high-end cocktail lounge. One of the few really well-known in the country. I really wanted to go. Oh, that's loud. I really wanted to go on this trip and just did not get the opportunity, but they do light up at night. Uh, they do have food, but they're an actual cocktail lounge with real cocktails. And I've been following them on Instagram since before they opened and uh, really hoping to get there and show you guys at some point. All right, we got Top Spin for sports stuff. We have a little salon, Winnie's. I don't know what Winnie's is. We got a couple things here I can't really identify. I'm gonna show, still going along the campus. Some buildings down there, though there's a, like an airplane hangar style building, not an actual airplane hangar. Got some shops, got a little house there. Look at that little narrow house with lots of windows. And then we got Takama, Bed and Bath Accessories. Aka, which is a hotel supply store, but like fancy stuff. Don Platano, which is a, it's a little bit confusing because what they serve is Platanos, but the name is Platano. And uh, they're kind of a famous plantain gastro bar. Um, mostly famous because they're a gastro bar that focuses on plantains. That alone makes them super unique. I do not know what's behind this crenellated wall here, but it does look cool. And we're coming up on the end of the campus. Here's the campus wall. Hopefully you can see it right there. If you can't see the wall through the fence, then this sign marks the edge of the wall and the beginning of the next campus. But this is a university, not a high school. But you can see how beautiful it looks going into this campus. It's probably really nice back there, but it goes way back. Up here, it's mostly just an entrance. It's not uh, the wide part of the campus. I'm gonna step back so you can see it. It's Thomas More, eh? Universitas. That's a beautiful tree. Love this tree. Lots of nice shade for the whole street. All right, and we've got a big office building here. Just gotta show the parking lot. Got an AM PM. It's one of our standard mini marts, 24 hours. So if you live in this area, getting to, you know, basic super mini stuff, very, very easy. And uh, this is the Discover building, or buildings, I guess. Hopefully you can kind of see them. It's a little bit hard. A little hard to show them because we're so close. There is a sidewalk on the other side now. I could consider crossing over, but you can see this one. They're basically identical to very similar office buildings. If you're looking for traditional office space, Managua is generally where you go. You can, of course, put offices in any city, but Managua has so much infrastructure, so many workers, so many resources. And as you can see, beautiful neighborhoods. There's so many places that you could put a nice office, especially if you're just looking for, you know, a couple person office, a small little place to rent. By the way, this is a residential that they're advertising on the Caratera Messiah. Everything's on the Caratera Messiah, but that's where all the beautiful modern houses go that aren't the mansions with estates like we get out here. One of these. All right, you can see some, this is definitely a residential area. Over here on the right, now we're on the left, I was gonna show real quick. This is a really old something, interesting style. Uh, probably tiny and not very nice, but it could be nice. But this place on the right is definitely like a mansion complex or a couple of really nice estates. One of these. 
and you can see more of it over there. It's getting a little bit loud. We're coming up to a major intersection here. <clears throat> A little, little coffee shop there, hidden. A little bit hard to see, but that is the La Ruta de Mocha. More of these really cool trees shading the sidewalk. Now this road that we're coming up on is the Pista. Oh, small house over here, just so you can see what life is like if you have more of a normal house. This is, I believe, home appliance store in the corner. So we're in a little plaza here, which I will show. I'm gonna come up on the corner and then talk here. So first of all, let's talk about this road. This large boulevard that we're looking at with all the traffic is the Pista Jean-Paul Genie. This is one of the new major roads on the outskirts of the city. So this is where a new ring road has started to go in. And it's very important. A lot of the best stuff in the city is along this road. And I think that's what we're going to do is walk down it because it does have a nice sidewalk. People get very impatient if you don't go when you can here. Uh, it has a nice sidewalk and we can walk down along it. But I just want to show where we're at. So on the what it must be the southeast corner. So we just came from up the hill right there. This corner is the Club Terrassa. This is a really exclusive um, club and restaurant and cocktail lounge and a bunch of things are in Club Terrassa. I've never been in there. I need to go at some point and film, but... Can't, can't make it everywhere all the time. Uh, you can see how much traffic there is even on a Saturday morning. This is a heavy traffic time. We've got, this is the northeast corner that we're looking at. We're looking forward into v Via Fontana. And if you stay on this road, it turns into Los Robles. And then this is the Jean-Paul Genie heading east. I'm sorry, heading west. And it really doesn't go for very far. We're We've got um, two more major roads and then it kind of peters out. This is a new ring road. If you were to follow the Avenida here and go forward, uh, the next major intersection is the uh, Pista Suburbana. That is the complete ring road that goes all the way around the city. Um, all the way around is only like a semicircle. We don't actually have, because of the lake, there's no way to go all the way around. Uh, so, but it's, it's one of the main ring roads and the farthest out that is complete. Jean Balchani, I assume, will become a complete ring road in the future. On the east, ooh, we can't hear over that. Wow. In the east, if you take this all the way, which is not that far, you're gonna end up at the Galerias, which we showed uh, in a previous video. That is the really nice, one of these. That's the really nice shopping center, the very high-end area in Santo Domingo. So this is, the main ring road going directly into Santa Domingo runs into the Carretera Messiah and all that in that direction. And in this direction, it just goes out to uh, First Avenue uh, and, and kind of ends there, uh, but will extend, I'm sure, all the way to the connectors uh, to uh, Hinotepe and Leon in the future. And then we have this nice plaza here, mostly home goods. So nothing too Super exciting, but a nice little plaza if you're shopping for that stuff. But we're going to head back up the road a little bit so that we can cross more easily. And I'm going to pick up when we get over to the Club Terrassa sign on the other side. And we're going to take you guys down where those people are walking and explore Jean-Paul Genie. All right, you can see the intersection we were just at. This is Club Terrassa right here. And we are walking eastbound on Pista Jean-Paul Genie. Now, Jean-Paul Genie has grown up quickly as one of the most exclusive addresses you can have in the city, as it connects many of the fanciest, nicest neighborhoods. Oh, we can actually get a look here. Nice. So this is a really exclusive area to be in because it is the ring road cutting through the amazing neighborhoods that previously were inaccessible or very hidden. Much like when we climbed up the hill the other day here in Managua, we ended up at areas that are very hidden away. Uh, and that's, this area was like that until this came through. And now it's much more, much more known and accessible. And a lot of important things are located here. Wow, this is a beautiful campus for this club. That is a large complex. And look at their gardens out front, very nice. 
They need to fix up these cables though. <laughs> You can see uh, we have what was probably a nice shop over here that didn't make it. Agua de Luna. No idea what that is. Moonwater, obviously, but. Then Conti is here, which I know the name, but I don't know exactly what it is. I believe it's a gallery. All right. Oh, advertising a fiesta. This might be the access road on 17th. I'm not completely sure. What I did. A couple little places doing breakfast. Yes. You can see there's a wash going back there. Some empty space on the left. That's the north. All right, and now we are at Grupo Q's Nissan dealership. Actually, a Chevy dealer here. Just gonna point out some modern office buildings over on the left. There's some development land available, or I assume available, empty at least, along there, and then some really nice office buildings. And so this is Grupo Q as well. The much smaller Chevy dealer Chevys, you will see them around the country, but they are pretty rare. And then we're coming up on their Cherry dealership. Now, this is something you won't see in the U.S. We get a lot of Chinese-made cars here. A lot of my audience are going to be like, well, I would never drive a Chinese-made car. In reality, there are some really phenomenal Chinese car makers making really high quality cars at very good prices. Reliability, I don't know each maker, so I'm not speaking to this one specifically, but there's some very high quality, very reliable car options from Chinese makers. You really limit yourself outside of the US if you're not considering them. I am actually planning on, there's a, a Chinese made car that I really wanna get with really good pricing. Uh, but it's not available yet in country, but it is available in Costa Rica. So I plan to buy it there and do an import because I get a one-time import and everybody's gonna say, boy, Scott, I swear you just did some videos about why you don't import cars. Yes, that is true. It's a very specific case. Now this is one of the offices, is not the main one, of Grupo Pelas, the largest uh, company in the country and Avas, is their bank. This is a big ad for their bank there. We have a subway, spare me, a taco stop, more office buildings. What are these? As we head east, which is the way we're walking, Jean-Paul Genie is famous as one of the top addresses for restaurants in the country. So if you're looking for, I'm gonna go up just a little bit so I can cross more easily. Ah, the Escala building. You can see that from the Doubletree if you stand in the right spot. 
And then, okay, we're looking pretty safe. I cross over. So restaurants like to come here. What are these? Because if you're gonna be in a mall or in a really tightly packed area, then you have places you wanna go. This is the Avenue Market, which is a restaurant. Very cute, pet friendly, it says. Most places are pet friendly. You don't normally have to write that here. It's rare that you won't accept animals, but some places that are primarily indoors will advertise it just so you can feel comfortable going in. We got a nice little plaza here. You can see travel. There's still travel agencies here. That's something that's very different than the US. Lots of nail bars, boutiques, that kind of stuff. So, but if you want restaurants with a bit more space, you want to be able to have a large restaurant, you want a big outdoor seating area, you want a more suburban experience, then Jean Paul Genie is the street to be on. And it is just loaded as we head east with tons and tons of restaurants. A lot of really nice looking places. Now this is one that I don't really know. I've seen the name, but I have no idea. Zacatelli Moon. But they got some beautiful outdoor seating there. So it's nice if you live in this part of the city, it's really easy to just constantly explore restaurants. It's a little bit more spread out. You're generally gonna drive out here. I'm the anomaly walking. I mean, certainly you're seeing people who work in this area walking on the sidewalks, but people who are coming to restaurants and such are not. And you can see nice houses right up the street. A lot of nice housing behind everything out here. Beautiful, beautiful housing. No shortage of options for living in this part of the city, especially for expats who are looking for something on the upscale side. Another nice plaza here with offices on the second floor. And I'm just gonna show Got some offices and the Holiday Inn Express right over there. California Wax Bar. This is an office site. So this is a place where you can rent offices for the day or by the month or whatever, like small rental offices. Not a ton of that in Managua, but it definitely exists. All right, just gave the camera a second there. Now, obviously, there are still empty spaces available for development. It's not a completely developed area yet. It's still quite young. In front of the Holiday Inn here, we have a Casa del Cafe. This is the main coffee shop chain for Nicaragua. My one complaint always with them is that they don't open early enough. Construction site over here looks like a new plaza maybe going in. I don't know if you can see it. There's a giant pit back behind this, but it's all cleared. So I don't know if they're planning on putting something giant back there or, or what the deal is. Now this is a new place as far as I can tell. Maria Alta Seafood and Bar. Managua still has a lot of green space, which is awfully nice. Yes, the seafood restaurant is up there in this plaza that we can't really see. But you can see what's in this plaza. And notice multiple restaurants hidden up there. So Semaforo is a gastro bar. Maria Alta Seafood. People ask about vape shops. There's a few up there. 
You can see a little bit more flaws up there. Now we're coming up on the most famous and definitely the most high end gastro park in the country. Now in a country that loves gastro parks, that's saying something. This is the gastro park Jean Paul Genie. That is its name. By the way, it's going to show the steps leading up to this plaza. If you're coming from the street, that's what you climb up. I think it's, it's pretty attractive. It's just, that's a lot of climbing. We got Pet Planet over there with pet supplies. We have a whole another plaza on the other side. But directly in front of us is the Gastro Park. And this is loaded with really nice restaurants, beautifully done. Of course, it's closed, it's early in the morning. But if you are coming here, I'm gonna show this. You come eastbound on Jean Paul Genie, you can't get here from the westbound. So you approach from down there, you kind of watch for the Holiday Inn. And then you got that giant plaza over there, which we can't really see from here. And then you come up on this right here, and this is obviously closed right now, but this is opened up and you're able to go and parking is way up there. There's lots of parking, so don't worry about that. You can come right in. I'm gonna walk through the gastro park just the tiniest bit here. They have a couple big bars. It's absolutely beautiful. The whole thing is done. Oh, it's loud. The whole thing is done with uh, shipping containers and it has grassy areas and lots of open, but they have lots of seating over the top as well. So this is one of the bars down here at the bottom, but then the restaurants are layered up through the gastro park and a uh, lot of good eating options in a really beautiful setting. And often there's live music out here. So definitely a place if you're going to be in this part of Managua, especially if you're with a group and you're wondering what to eat, you're wondering what to do. Uh, and you can see the main entrance up there. It's only so big, but that, that BAC sign and the big overpass thing with the uh, shipping container is the entrance to the park. So there's often like 15 to 20 different restaurants in there. Uh, plus you can get drinks and stuff. And you can sit anywhere. Everyone can get their food from a different place. It's really, really nice. Uh, so it's the kind of place that if you're looking to experiment with a bunch of different small food items from different places, you have a bunch of different people and you want to put together meals that different people will like is a great option. And it's just, it's a beautiful setting in a nice part of the city. Uh, so we've come here many times. We've really enjoyed it. And I'm going to show this pulperia. This is a really cool neighborhood pulperia. But so I doubt we're going to actually get over there to, to get closer. But so that's the executive center, San Marino and a lot of different businesses located in there. So it's a little bit more of an office plaza than a shopping plaza. That guy was honking at us. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna continue down the hill pot past the Pulperia. And you're gonna see an ad in the middle there for InDrive. We talk about that a bit here. Here in Managua, that is your tool. Don't use Uber, we don't have Uber. We don't have anything like that. InDrive is a taxi app, it's different. And you pre-negotiate what you're gonna pay. It's, it's definitely different than how like an Uber works. I don't like it as much, it's still more stressful. You gotta know more of what things are gonna cost. But it does work and if you live here, it's just, it's what you use. So it's an important tool uh, for your safety, for getting a good price, for knowing what's gonna happen, for making taxis predictable. Uh, as always, I don't recommend just hailing a taxi that's relatively dangerous anywhere in the world. The concept of hailing a taxi is dangerous. There's no way to monitor them because they're, they don't know who, they don't know that you are in them and they don't know, this is a church on the right, by the way, uh, and they don't know where they're going. All the tracking and safety mechanisms that an Uber, a Lyft, an InDrive provide are missing when you hail a taxi. So just in general, for safety reasons, don't go around hailing taxis, especially in foreign countries and big cities. Now, we say that, and in Leon, I've heard that InDrive is starting to work there, uh, but in Leon, it is generally safe to take a taxi. You may get overcharged a little bit, but they do police themselves pretty well, but it's a very small taxi community. Uh, so small towns is definitely a different thing. Very big church here with a gorgeous campus. For those wondering, it is now 
This is a nice walk to do this morning. One of these. If you can't tell, I am going downhill quite a bit. You'll notice some people do ask me about car rentals. That is a Hertz Dollar Thrifty ad, and those three go together everywhere that I see them. Uh, and that one is advertising for rentals in San Juan del Sur. So there's an office for them down there, which we knew. I've mentioned that, but I don't have any details. Uh, but they do exist there. And they also, all three of them exist in the Doubletree and in the airport. So if you're at the airport, you can just rent a car there. But if you're coming out to the Double Tree, like I often do when I'm staying in Managua for any length of time, and you feel like you want to rent a car, you can rent right from the Double Tree. We got a Mitsubishi Mazda Ford dealer over on the left. We really never see Fords in the countries, but Mitsubishi, which is part of Nissan, we see quite often, and Mazdas are pretty well represented. See the big signs for Burger King? They're pretty big here in the city. We used to have one in Leon, but it has gone away. We're hoping it comes back. That would be really nice for us if we got that back. They have one of the best vegetarian menus, especially now they have added the vegetarian chicken that's not even available in the United States. I was just there and checked. We had it, oh, they're gonna have loud music out here now. We're gonna have to be quiet for a bit. And this, we have arrived at the Gallerias. This is the second mall of the city, but the fancier of the two. Metro Central is the other one. There are more than two malls. There's two big, famous malls. And uh, if you are going to come here, I recommend that you actually turn here in front of the Carl's Jr. You come in on Jean-Paul Genie, and you come to this intersection. You have that, that Honda Hyundai dealer right over there, Excel. And you turn just before the Carl's Jr. And yes, we did just this week open a Carl's Jr. in Leon. So we're very excited about that. As far as I know, they don't have vegetarian, but I'm gonna go check it out. But for the meat eaters who are looking for American food, it's one of the better burger places. And since we don't have a Burger King, having a Carl's Jr. is a big deal. We have that and McDonald's. They're kind of the only American things we have up there. So you go past those really big trees in the middle, which are super cool. Uh, and you go up kind of at the farthest point that you can see the cars up there and you actually turn left. And that is part of the mall parking for uh, the Gallerias. And that parks right at the restaurant area. That's where we go to eat. Uh, Pane y Vino, uh, the um, uh, Spanish house, Cajun, uh, sushi Ito, where we where we had the sushi the other night. Um, a lot of restaurants, the old Hard Rock Cafe that's not there anymore, the shell of it. All of that is right up there. That's where you park, and you can go all through this mall. And there is like food on the outside, like Carl's Jr. and stuff as well. Uh, but there's a lot of really good food up there, and the Shanghai Bistro and stuff are out there. Like it's a, it's expanding. They keep growing uh, because this is such a popular area. So that is. 
that is my recommendation on where to go to park uh, for for the mall, if, especially if you're going to be eating. There's also a big circle down there. So that's the end of Jean-Paul Genie, right down there with all that traffic. Hopefully you can see it. There's a big traffic circle down there. That is the Caratera Messiah. So if you go to the, to the right, to the southeast, that's gonna take you out to Granada, to Messiah and all that. And if you go left to the northwest, that is gonna take you downtown towards the capital and the lake. Uh, that gives you kind of an idea of where we are. And you've got this guy performing in the middle of the street. I'm going to sneak over there, hopefully, and uh, attempt to cross this highway. A lot of street performers out here. It is a big thing. This is the first I've seen like a little private circus. Often you get people who are juggling flames and stuff. That's kind of cool. That's interesting. All right. Everyone's turning here, so I got to watch it. You can go straight, but who would go straight? If you're coming up there, you're turning. And of course here, you can go on red. You don't have to have a green light. As long as there's no traffic, you're allowed to just go. So you have to, things are a little bit less predictable. All right, we're heading back up the other way. And we're gonna have that loud music here in a moment. So I'm gonna turn off the camera actually and walk by this little bit and get past this loud uh, car dealership up there right here that I'm standing at. But just gotta give you another view. This is the end of Jean-Paul Genie. You can see the traffic circle down there. And that is the Metro, that is the, the Galerias of Santa Domingos. Sportsline outlet, lots of ads. And we're going to pick back up up there just a little ways. All right, we just came from down there. There's the big church that we walked past. And I'm on a long uphill climb now. <laughs> now I'm going uphill and the sun is out. And it's a little bit later in the morning. So it's just getting warmer and warmer. That's very strange. So you'll notice sign here for Santa Lucia Gastronomia and it's located in the Edificio Escala. That is the Escala building that I pointed out as we walked by probably 20 minutes ago in the video. So there are restaurants hiding in high rises just like they would anywhere else. You gotta know what to look for. Here's that office plaza, San Marino that we said. Very nice looking office complex in a great location. And there's the gastro park on the other side again. And more offices and Pet Planet. I think Pet Planet may be the only like retail in this particular complex. Compartimos tu amor por ellos. We share your love for them.
You can get a little bit better look at the plaza across the way that we were not able to see because we were too close. And over here we have a plastic tank dealer. We talk a lot about water pressure and needing tanks here in country. And uh, so plastic tanks are big business here. You'll see a lot of vendors for that. Another restaurant ad, I don't know this one. Okay, crossing this street. And down here, there are residentials. According to the sign, the Residencial Planes de Punta Dia. Next to the Holiday Inn Express. And the Casa del Cafe, which might be open. I might be tempted to stop in there. You can't stop me. Also a restaurant called El Canasto to share with gusto. What do you think, are they looking open? They are looking open. I'm not ridiculously sweaty. Nice cold drink could be a nice way to go. I'm now well equipped with a delicious recovery smoothie from Casa del Cafe. I am back off with a bit of walking left to do. A super cold and healthy smoothie is definitely a good way to help on a warm day doing a long walk. Now Casa del Cafe is not cheap. <laughs> Prices are in US dollars. Now, this is like nearly $5, which in the US you'd be like, wow, that's cheap. But here, that's definitely a very pricey smoothie. It's also full of stuff. It's really good. So we're back at some of those restaurants and you can see Escala, which has a restaurant somewhere, probably on the top floor, probably that corner that you can see up there. And we're back at Plaza El Tiangue. Buenos días.
If you're looking for a more affordable way to cool down while you're out for a walk, an AM PM is a perfect option. A little mini mart with uh, a lot of things you can buy pretty cheap. I'm not gonna go walk down here, but this is the taco stop uh, plaza, I guess. So these are all places that they own, Chicken Burger, Okiwaki, and Burger Shack. Now, Taco Stop was new, not a huge plaza. Uh, they were new when we lived in Granada nine years ago. So they're not new, new by any stretch. And at that time, hopefully you can see them pretty well here. So Taco Stop had expanded from Managua into Granada when we lived there. They took over the downtown movie theater which have been closed for a long time and uh, put in a beautiful taco stop taco place. But I think their tacos are a bit eclectic for for Nicaraguan palates. It's Tex-Mex tacos, which is not something Mex that the Nicaraguans expect because tacos here are very different. And they weren't exactly Tex-Mex tacos as Americans would expect. Tex-Mex being an American taco, not a Mexican taco. They weren't really Tex-Mex, they were good, good quality, but not exactly what we would expect being from the Tex-Mex zone and eating loads and loads of Tex-Mex food. So I think they really struggled in both directions. It's gonna point out more residencias back there, gated. <clears throat> I think they struggled in the tough and small Granada market to gain a foothold and eventually gave up because when I came back in 2019, they were already gone. So they didn't last very long. But here in Managua, they've hung on and they, a number of years ago, expanded into uh, the chicken place. And then they've been expanding since then. So they have their own little mini chain of, of places. And I've heard they're all of them are good, but they're mostly just here in Managua. I haven't seen them anywhere else in the country anymore. We're back to the Nissan dealer. Billboard here for the Barrio Cafe, one of my favorite restaurants here in the city. They used to own the restaurant and hotel that Alan and Rachel and I stayed at in San Juan del Sur in 2019. They long ago gave that up, I don't know why, but that's where I got introduced to them and now eat there regularly, ate there yesterday. Now you can't really see it, but this empty field, which, well, you can really see the empty field for sure. But this building just beyond it is actually a furniture store. All right, we're back to the Plaza Toscana, or the Tuscan Plaza. It's actually a really cute plaza. There's some cute outdoor seating. You need to come over here sometime. All right, now we know what it is. So on the right here is Panoli. This is a cafe, kitchen, and bar with beautiful outdoor seating, beautiful. Okay, Conti that we saw before is furniture and decorations. And then over here on the left, 
is Lunette. Uh, my style, my brands. So clothing store there. And then this is the one that we saw that had closed, Agua La Luna, sadly. It's a great spot. Not a ton of parking, very hard to get in and out, places like this. And we are back, that is right there. That is the Club Terrassa complex that does take a while to walk past. And then that red light right there, that Semaforo, is the light at Avenida Primera, which takes us back to the Double Tree. Now I'm gonna wait here. I'm gonna turn off the camera and I'm gonna cross over, get back to the sidewalk that we know works really well so I can head back towards the Double Tree. All right, I crossed the street and uh, took the corner, so Club Terrassa. It's right here, that's its big sign. That's Jean-Paul Chani down there. And I'm standing on La Avenida Primera. We are heading southbound once again towards the Double Tree. Should point out that anywhere along here, getting a taxi, whether a full taxi or one of these, is super easy. There's always one coming by. Stand around and look like you need one and someone will honk. Just wave your arm. They'll come pick you up. You don't have to walk everything like I do, but it is great exercise. And someone come to La Ruta del Moca, they're not getting enough customers. It's a cute little thing in a nice little part of town. They deserve a few more people getting coffee. There's that little house I pointed out before. It might be nice. It's just old looking and small, but what a great location. Buenos dias. Well, I'm glad you guys came along on this walk with me. These are fun to do. I love getting to explore the city. Sometimes I get to go new places. Sometimes it's places I drive all the time, but doing it on foot, it's such a different experience. You see all the little tiny shops, you get to know what they are, how they connect together. I really like getting to do these explorations. And all the good places to live, all the housing, that stuff's always hidden. I don't know how people who live here find any of it to like try to live there, you know? How do they attract initial customers? I just, I don't know. Because the people who are living in there rarely are walking by. Back to Thomas Mora University. Universitas. This is a steep hill. Back at this plaza with Don Platano. It is starting to get warm out here. Quarter after nine at this point.
the Colegio Central America advertising their prom. There is the double tree. We have made it back. And there, across the way, ignore the car. And this big pile of trash. There you can see the other valley. We walked down through that valley and up to that other ridge and down to the valley on the other side. It was a good walk. My watch says two and a half miles, but I'm not all the way back yet. It's not gonna be three miles, but it's really close to what we did the other day. Thanks for joining me, everybody. If you'd like to support my long walks, my ability to get Casa Del Cafe, you can buy me a coffee at https colon slash slash buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me and really helps pay for the cameras and the staying in hotels to be able to stay in these places to walk and go to different parts of the country get footage like this for you guys get down there in those comments let me know what you think any comments places you want me to see things that you like didn't like they have questions about and of course if you go down in the description i've got a whole write-up that explains how to send in a video so you can send me a video of you you could be on the show asking questions, making comments, all that kind of stuff. That would be super cool. The audience loves to see you guys. As always, if you would like and subscribe, post on social media somewhere. Tell a friend, family member, someone about the show. Get someone hooked, someone who's thinking about relocating, retiring, moving, travel. Send them on over. Let them know about the show. And for the rest of you, I will see all of you. Check out this view. Look at how much that dips down. I will see all of you tomorrow. And I'll do my best to pop four more videos up on the screen. If you would click one, that would be so kind. It tells the algorithm that it should show you more of these episodes every time you come to YouTube.